everybody. Thanks for your patience with us. Um, both Dr. Uh, Hyla and I were just getting through some other things today, and here we are. And uh, today, I am super excited, not only about my guests, but about the topic. I think you'll find it very, very relevant. Um, whether or not you use CBD or know much about it, we're going to dive into some of the science behind the effects for uh, brain for sure, but also for the body. And uh, I have been just uh, very surprised and interested in continuing to learn more about how beneficial it can be for neurological inflammation. So uh, before we do that, just a little background, you know, I'm here most Tuesdays and some Fridays, and uh, we always love when you join, I will uh, try to keep track of some questions along the side. So if you have questions in real time or want to say hello, just type into the uh, feed there. If you're watching this recorded on the podcast or on YouTube, uh, you can certainly comment there and subscribe as well. Um, anything that you want to know as far as old shows can be found on my YouTube channel, which is just under my name, Dr. Jill Carnahan. Uh, so go there. We have like 70 plus hours of interviews with great experts like Dr. Cass and um, so many other things. And then if you want free blog information, that's at my website, jillcarnahan.com. And last thing is if you aren't part of the newsletter, um, please do subscribe. I'll leave a link there. I have all kinds of free stuff we share every week on the newsletter. So I want to introduce my friend. We have uh, traveled in the same circles with functional integrative medicine for probably over a decade. Um, and I just always have such great respect about the information that Dr. Cass brings to our field. And today will be no different. You will really enjoy hearing from her. I'm going to actually do a formal introduction and then um, we'll jump right in. So Dr. Hyla is a recognized pioneer in holistic and functional medicine and psychiatry in particular. She's a frequent guest on radio, TV, podcasts, and documentaries. She's written several popular books, including The Addicted Brain and How to Break Free, Natural Highs with Patrick Holford, and Eight Weeks to Vibrant Health. She helps people enhance their mood and mind as well as overcome addiction using targeted nutritional supplements. Her latest addition is CBD, which we'll talk all about today, which enhances the effect of the other nutrients as well as having many positive effects on brain health. So welcome, Dr. Cass. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Such a pleasure. I'm, I'm just delighted to be here. Me too. And we've tried several times. I just told you before we jumped on, thank you for your patience. I think I canceled twice and it's just those crazy schedules of ours. And I apologize, but I'm so glad we're here. I'm glad we made it work. And um, it's so good to see you even virtually. Um, so let's dive in. What I'd love to start with with guests is story of just how you got into medicine first and then how you navigated to functional integrative. Um, and then we'll go on to CBD. But tell us just a little bit about your journey. Well, I think I was destined to be a doctor. My dad was a doctor. And from the earliest, my earliest memories are going on calls with him, or he, he also had his office at home. We lived in Toronto and we had this beautiful furnished basement with, you know, it was not a cellar, with a beautiful, <laughs> uh, he had beautiful office space. And I would be the greeter. Here I am like five years old, six years old. I'd be answering the door and letting them in. And I felt like I was part of the family, part of the club. <laughs> and as I got older, he would discuss cases with me and he acted as if I were a colleague. And it, I just sort of, you know how you play it, fake it till you make it? Yeah. So I just kind of fell into it. And he, he actually took me to women's college hospital one time with women doctors and said, see, women are doctors. Because this was a time when there were no women, yeah. doctors, very few women doctors. So a lot of encouragement from my father for may he rest in peace. And he, he really inspired me and, so, and inspired me to be the doc, kind of doctor I am because he was very, very kind, very personable. I'd see people walk in to the office feeling very upset, worried and walk out smiling. Oh. So, so you really modeled that really bedside yeah. manner and, and how cool that from such a young age, you got to witness and see and the power of that, what you're talking about is like that holding space for people, right? Like, except making a space for them to feel comfortable because what we do in medicine, it's, there's a lot of vulnerability. And I realize more and more, the more I do it, the more like how precious it is, the gift of sitting with a patient and having them like really share some deep, dark stuff, um, sometimes happy, but sometimes really difficult with us. It's like sacred, isn't it? Like this thing that we get it to- It is a sacred family. trust, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, by the way, medical school was allopathic, regular yeah. old medicine, but very interesting. I just found it fascinating. What I didn't like, however, was 
the way patients were treated. Yes. And medications being full of side effects. Mm -hmm. And I just was always kind of empathizing with the patient and, yeah. and trying to find a better way to do things. And it became clear to me that the medications were not the answer. And I very early on, even in, in the residency, started looking at alternatives mm -hmm. and that is like diet and lifestyle. I and love that because you started right in, even during education. I did the same before we got out into practice. You actually had, it's almost like you came in and, and just like you, I think the allopathic model is beautiful. I learned so much great foundation, but then it's like allopathic plus we've got a bigger toolbox, right? Right. So I expanded my toolbox and continued to always going to conferences and learning, learning new methods. And it's such an evolving, exciting field. You know, there's no end to it. You're and right. we see the results. We get results. We get amazing results. We do. And uh, especially, so especially in the field of psychiatry, which is your expertise, I love your perspective because it's so needed. And I'm curious as far as you kind of started delving into this very early, but and you mentioned, alluded to this, but I want to talk more because right now, psychiatry, mostly the tools of conventional psychiatry or medications, there's a place for those. We all use them. But tell me more about when you saw that model and the limitations and then how that allowed you to go into other options, because really there's not a ton of allopathic options besides um, medications. Well, when you work with the body's chemistry, I mean, we have the best chemistry, best pharmacy inside us. And nature knows how to heal us. So it's ludicrous to think we can take a strong medication and sort of clobber our brain into submission. It doesn't work. Right. It, 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 it really does clobber you. And the side effects are terrible. Yeah. That's what I've seen too, is a certainly, um, and often the body is so smart that it will, um, change neurotransmitter production or uh, become immune, which is also the changing of the neurochemistry over time. So that even if a med initially gave some benefit, often over time, I find it to be much less effective. That's exactly, it wears off, mm -hmm. the effect wears off, but going off the medication can be really a problem because there have been brain changes. Yes. So the same brain changes that make the drug not work anymore also interfere with your, with your being able to get off it. So getting off it suddenly is really dangerous, really bad, and you can have terrible effects that last for months, even years. Yeah. So the, the way to do it, there is a way to do it, and that is do it gradually, but also to support your own chemistry with the right nutrients, with starting with diet, lifestyle, and specific targeted nutrients that help make your neurotransmitters, your brain chemicals. Like, our brain knows how to do that if we give it the right material. So let's talk just briefly about nutritional interventions. And then I want to go mostly of our talk to CBD specifically, but obviously for your decades of practice that the nutrition has been primary, what would you do if someone came in, say depression, anxiety, um, what kinds of things? I mean, the gut has an effect, toxicity has an effect. Right. You, 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 you got it. Right. Yeah. How would you frame that and kind of start to get them on the path nutritionally? Um, yeah. The interesting thing is, of course, it doesn't stop at the, the brain. Yeah. It doesn't end here. Your mental health doesn't end at your neck. It's a whole body process. Of course, we look at the gut. We look for infections, toxicity, like heavy metals and chemicals. Uh, we look for a history of head injury. We look for any source of inflammation because when the, when the brain is trying to tell us something, when it, shows up at, well, a person shows up with anxiety and depression what that those are our symptoms those aren't conditions they're right. symptoms it's the brain saying i'm inflamed i'm missing something something's out of balance so then we we test uh, we take a good history and give them what they need if, it, if it's a gut and very often it's uh the microbiome yes. is it, I'm out of balance and there's a very strong gut brain connection. So we definitely have to heal the gut. So psychiatry is not really just the study of the brain. In fact, in, in allopathic medicine, they're not even looking at the brain really. It's probably the only field that, the only specialty where they don't look at the actual organ. 
Yeah, yeah, so interesting to think that way, right? Um, and something you mentioned really interesting, I was just talking to a friend who's the neurosurgeon for the Denver Broncos, and he's got functional medicine training as well. So I love talking to him because he got this very conventional, and he was talking about the data on um, TBIs, traumatic brain injuries and concussions, and really talking about how if a human just gets a traumatic brain injury and they really don't have any underlying infections or mold toxicity or anything else, they often recover and do pretty well. But it's like the traumatic brain injury concussion plus the inflammation from something like Lyme disease or inflammation from autoimmunity or infection or toxic mold. And it's it really escalates the traumatic brain injury to be an issue, like the, the long-term consequences of that. So he was almost saying, bottom line, if you just have a head injury and that's it, you can often recover, especially if it's mild. It's that plus the underlying infection, inflammation, things that cause what we could call, you know, autoimmune encephalopathy or toxic encephalopathy or whatever other term we'd use. Um, and again, you're more of an expert than I, and so is he, but I was fascinated to hear him say in this conventional concussion professional athlete world that it's really not the concussion by itself. It's concussion plus inflammation plus. from an infection, right? I'm sure, right. I'm sure you see that and would agree. Absolutely. And you take the patient where you see them. You know, yeah. somebody's an accumulation of their lifetime of whatever experiences they've had. Yeah. And it could so that's be where history really, really, really does matter. So let's yeah. talk about CBD. Um, I agree. Like I've been um, just as I read the neurological benefits and the science and the literature, it's amazing to me how profoundly beneficial that or how many benefits that it actually has. Let's talk a little bit about when did you really find the benefits and start to use it in your practice and take us through some of that with CBD and the benefits and uh, what you're seeing happen and it being used for. Well, a few years ago when it kind of came crashing onto the scene, yeah. I, I looked into it. In fact, I was a little curious because uh, I'm not a particular fan of THC. I know people enjoy getting high, but it was not something that, that interested me so much. And when I first heard about CBD, I thought, well, yeah, it's probably an excuse to get high. You know, yeah. what did I know? So, uh, some friends of mine had written a book about it. But I did read the book and then it's like a light went on. Wow, there is something to this. And the effects it can have on psychiatric conditions is amazing. Mm -hmm. It for anxiety, depression, seizure disorders, traumatic brain dis disorder. And so we we're just talking about TBI. Mm -hmm. It's excellent for TBI. Yeah. Um, and Alzheimer's. So I, the, I took it, I began to take it really seriously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it sounds like, is this panacea, you know, is this placebo effect? But it isn't really because you can use it on animals too, and they have a very good result. Uh, the reason why it works in so many different ways and doing so many different things has to do with its influence on something called the endocannabinoid system. And once you understand that, when you understand the endocannabinoid system, you can get why CBD works in so many different ways. So do you want me to explain? <laughs> yes, yes. Let's talk a little bit about that system because these receptors are all over our body, right? That's what's really cool. Everywhere. We have them in the brain and in, in our organs, in our immune system, in the gut, in our uh, endocrine system, everywhere. And it's a system of communication and homeostasis. So it helps, it facilitates communication among all those systems. And its job is to help us to rest, to protect us, to de-stress us, and to heal. Mm. So really important things. A very important system. Really important. And the, the, the difficult thing is that a lot of people have a low endocannabinoid system, which means it's not doing all of those good things that you want it to do. Uh, the, the two main uh, endocannabinoids, we actually make these endocannabinoids, these feel-good chemicals, uh, one of them is anandamide and the other is 2-AG and then there are a bunch of others, but th these are the most studied. Now, anandamide was first discovered in connection with te uh, THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is what gets you high mm. in weed. And it was, it's the molecule that it, when, when THC, it was postulated, if THC makes you high, it has to have a corresponding molecule inside us right? Because there is a receptor for it. And then it was discovered it was the anandamide receptor that THC was going for. And the product that we make is anandamide. So we make our very own 
THC, as it were, but yeah. it's called an andamide. So uh, while THC attaches to that receptor, CBD also facilitates the receptor in just a little different way. So if you're low in your endocannabinoid system, you don't have enough anandamide and you're not feeling good and you're feeling anxious and you can't sleep, uh, you can have GI problems. All of these things are going on because you have a low endocannabinoid system. We can come in and use a phytocannabinoid, phytomanine plant like cannabidiol. And it comes in and it makes the, the anandamide work better. So it works with your own inner pharmacy to do what needs to be done. And it does it so much better than a drug because yeah. you're working with an, an already existing system. You just have to feed the system, recognize it and feed it. And you have an amazing treatment. That's what I've seen, uh, Carla. It's basically the, the um, different... Um, the patients that come in, their stress system is out of whack. And all this, the signs and symptoms that you mentioned are really related a lot to the stress hormones and that. And it sounds like, is there evidence that it decreases cortisol or that it changes some of the sure. stress hormone response? Sure. In the stress response, what is it? It's fight or flight. We're mm -hmm. in danger. When we're in danger, what happens? We, our heart rate goes up. Our hearing becomes more acute. Our vision becomes more acute the blood all goes to the periphery so we can run, right? And that we're built for that. We're built for fight or flight because we had to run away from predators. However, these days we're not running away from predators. We're sitting at a desk and what's going on? We're stressed. There's financial issues, there's deadlines, there's kids, there's family, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So our, our stress response is going, but we're not running. Yeah. We're not dissipating that cortisol and adrenaline. It's just coursing through us. Mm -hmm. And what happens, the, everything is going to the periphery, the, the, uh, the blood flow and the energy. So the, our more vegetative um, aspects, our hormones, reproduction, our gut function, digestion, um, our, being able, our heart working the right way, our blood pressure being normal, all of that, kind of goes by the wayside because we're in fight or flight and our body is acting as if we don't need those other things mm -hmm. going on right then. So people yeah. are having sexual dysfunction, right? And infertility. So right. everything goes offline and it's, it's a physiological response. It's actually a normal response to, to an abnormal situation. So you're absolutely right. So the endocannabinoid system is there to de-stress us. The problem is, this is a big problem. When we're stressed, our endocannabinoid system goes low. Ah. So we, have, we don't have enough of it to counterbalance all this, Got it. All this stress. You can actually tap it with CBD and say, hey, come on, help us out. Yep. And you're actually so tapping exactly. to produce so you, internal endocannabinoids. So there you go. Wow. Very Is simple. It makes sense. <laughs> and the thing that um, I think you've made really clear, but I know I was just like you, like I wasn't, I, I wasn't a prescriber of marijuana. I wasn't a fan of THC. So I initially was very adverse to get into that field. But as I, like you looked at the literature of CBD, I found it to be profoundly beneficial. And especially let's talk a little bit about the indications that you would use it for. It sounds like a lot of people could benefit, but neurologically or otherwise I found in my patients, of course, like seizures, brain inflammation, what else, what would be the spectrum of, of uh, types of patients you would prescribe this for or recommend it for? Well, any form of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Now, one big issue that is kind of rampant is post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. And people often don't even know they have it Yes, because it may have been very early trauma, may have been cumulative trauma. It may have been issues with attach, early attachment. Yes. And they don't really know what it is, but they have this just deep anxiety that's going on. Well, it, what's been shown is that CBD is really good for dealing with it. it. It goes to the part of the brain, the amygdala, which is in the limbic system. And it, it, in a way it detoxifies the traumatic memory. So the, the memory can, can remain. You can, you can remember if, if you do remember it, um, you know, or, um, certainly military people who've seen horrible things in, in battle 
and they have post-traumatic stress disorder. So they can maintain the memory, but the fear, the horrible fear that goes with it is dissipated because that's what it does. That is exactly what the endocannabinoid system does. You support the endocannabinoid system and it works for you. Wow, now that makes a ton of sense because um, I've done a lot of work and I've had a good life, but we all have some sorts of traumas. And so I have dove, dove in to those myself. And what I found is as I deal with those and heal those, they I can have a memory, but it no longer has a charge, right? And that's what you're talking about. Like, and I can have an older exactly. memory of something that seemed my cancer at 25 years old in the diagnosis. And now I can oh, talk yeah. about it and there's no, it's like it happened. I realized it and some of it was tough but there's no charge associated with it once you work through it. And it sounds like this system and CBD in general could help decharge a charged memory, right? Yeah, not only that, but you, you said something interesting too. And that is, I'm sure you did a lot of processing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, this therapeutic processing. When you're in fight or flight under the stress response, your rational thinking and your processing really go south. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to think analytically or philosophically or remember a whole lot when you're running away from a lion or a tiger, right? So you, you're absolutely on automatic. Yeah. You're, you can't think straight. And that's why, by the way, people do really stupid things under stress. Yeah. We, we know, you know, like um, cops who shoot people when they don't yeah. mean to, but yeah. they're stressed and they're reacting rather than... Right responding rationally. Mm -hmm. So as we uh, shore up the endocannabinoid system, your brain comes online and then you can actually process. So it, it, in some ways it actually just dissipates the fear just by virtue of uh, the biochemistry, but it also gives you the ability to process and to do the lifestyle things that we know we need to feel better, to deal with stress, your meditation, uh, dancing, socializing, um, being in nature, all of these things. So that's interesting because I remember learning years ago, like I was always on the go and I'd run and do activities that were high intensity and I had trouble sitting still. Now you're knowing where I'm going with this because that's trauma-based. So I learned over the years that part of me being still, things would come up and they were uncomfortable. So I would never sit still, just go, 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 go. But as I learned that that was part of a trauma response in order to be still and process some of these things, I can see how that kind of uh, CBD would be helpful or the cannabinoid system because it would allow you to sit with your thoughts, your feelings and those kinds of things and process versus run, which is our fight or flight. So um, that makes a ton of sense. Now, how do you use, say someone has never tried them before and they have a you know post-concussion injury or they're dealing with trauma or they're just, they can't sleep, they're anxious. How would you recommend um, they start or try that? Would it be just in the bedtime during the day? Um, what would be a typical recommendation for a patient who is struggling with some of these issues? Um, well, it depends. It depends on the issue. If it's insomnia, you'll want to take it close to bedtime. Although some people have a paradoxical reaction. Mm -hmm. And even though it, it, it should make you sleepy and it help you to relax, occasionally somebody gets a little activated. So I say, always start taking it during the day anyway, or take it on a weekend when it won't matter. Uh, and sometimes people will take it uh, to, to help them focus, which mm -hmm. it does beautifully. And they find it makes them drowsy because that's their setup. That's yeah. their yeah. internal chemistry. So you never quite know what, there's the, the average is it'll do both. Uh -huh. You know, if you, if you take um, a, a CBD, it'll um, help you to focus during the day and sleep at night and like that. But I actually developed my own line of CBD because I wanted to have certain qualities in it. I wanted a good taste. I didn't like the grassy taste of most of the formulas. So I put it in MCT oil, which is healing in its own right, and added some essential oil or organic essential lemon oil for Ooh. flavor. So that's good and organically grown. And in just different, um, I have different formulas, I have something that's a daytime one, and that speaks to what you just asked also, yeah. that the daytime one has specific terpenes that are more activating and focusing in the evening one has more calming and relaxing terpenes. And so in, in the plant, in the cannabis plant, we have not only CBD and THC, but we also have terpenes. And terpenes are a really important part of all herbs, all plants. And it's what gives them their distinctive smell, you know, like oregano, uh -huh. lavender, 
you know, we smell it and they have medicinal qualities. So it's the same thing with the CBD we, and we can add specific terpenes to boost it even further. Oh, and that's what I was gonna ask you about because I knew these terpenes and things have been really important and been studied. And I know that your products are really uh, holistic as would we'd expect because they have a little bit more of the spectrum of those active components in them. Right, so um, I actually recommend that people get a bottle of day and a bottle of night and then they can experiment. Yeah. So basically you start low and slow and gradually build up. So let's say you get a 750 milligram bottle, which is 25 milligrams per ml, which is a whole dropper, but the dropper is marked off. Yeah. In, um, so it's a, a measured dropper. So you can actually titrate, start off maybe a half a dropper, a quarter of a dropper, put it under your tongue, preferably close to a fatty meal mm -hmm. because it it's fat and it will be absorbed better and digested better because you've eaten some fat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, avocado, salmon, whatever. And uh, let it absorb under your tongue for 30 seconds to a minute. And notice what happens in sort of the next 10, 15 minutes. And you could ha actually have an effect on your target symptom. It could be the pain goes away, anxiety goes down, uh, whatever it is. And uh, if it doesn't, if that's not enough, then you do another dose. Excellent. And you can keep going that day or you wait till the next day and you try again and increase it more. So, so you find what your dose is and then you're usually dosing um, two or three times a day. Yeah. And I want to be clear because you and I both were at a little apprehensive years ago when we first got introduced to CBD and the benefits. Um, but for those of you listening, you don't get high from CBD by itself. It's really THC is the component. And again, uh, Dr. Haas, you can clarify if I'm saying this wrong, but um, a lot of people are nervous and they've had the stigma around it. And the science in CBD and our cannabinoid yeah. system, to me, it is far safer than most of the drugs we prescribe. So I want to be really clear there that we're not, there's not a component here that makes you feel high in general. I mean, there are products out there that do that. But what we're talking about is a primary, primarily CBD product. Is that right? Yeah. THC, and in fact, the cannabis plant has been bred to contain up to 25% THC. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. And really squeezing out the CBD. They don't want CBD. Yeah. And that's, that's a little dangerous. A lot of particularly young people, uh, particularly trying it for the first time, can end up having some really adverse reactions because it's just too much for their system. Mm -hmm. You know, in the old days, um, it was more balanced. Mm -hmm. It may have been grown to have THC in it, but certainly not to the extent that it is now. It so, reminds me of like gluten. They, they've, uh, a wheat, they've uh, bred it to contain a lot more gluten than it used to. So now the U.S. types of gluten or uh, wheat that are grown are typically very high gluten. And people can go to Europe and have that and not have a reaction, whereas here they do. It's a very similar idea as we've actually hybridized some of these products to be more harmful than they were originally meant to be. Exactly. Well, and by the way, when you have this reaction, because the people become agitated, they even become paranoid. paranoid. Mm -hmm. And they end up going to the emergency room and they end up getting an injection of very strong psychiatric medication, mm -hmm. told that they'll have to be on it maybe forever. Yeah. And wow. these are young people and it's such a shame. What really needs to happen is they need to get hold of some CBD and that will neutralize it. It, it's, it actually comes between the THC and the receptor. Wow. So it kind of forces it out wow. in, a, in a really good way and takes its place, which is, and it's coming, relaxing, and does the exact opposite of what the THC had just been doing. Yeah, fascinating. Now, one last thing, and then I wanna be sure and ask where we can find your products and we'll, make, we'll uh, put the links in. Um, but there are differences in CBD receptors genetically with people, right? Because some people have, I know I found out recently that I actually don't have a lot of receptors or there's some reason because I have trouble telling a lot with them. Now in patients, I've seen amazing results, but I've always wondered, because I think that my receptors, have you seen that? Is there any specific genes you've seen or any genetic components where people well, are less sensitive or maybe need different types? Usually it's because their endocannabinoid system is low. Mm. So you, what you do is you keep titrating up until you get a dose that really works. 
Okay. So, and then after a while, you don't have to keep taking really high doses. Mm -hmm. After a while, the brain, which is uh, this neuroplasticity, the brain adjusts and you may not need as much. Uh, so you kind of uh, I would like uh, sensitize the receptors in someone like that. And then once they have the effect of sleep or less anxiety or whatever else. Now, typically when people use CBD for whatever reason that we've talked about, are they off and on using it um, long-term or is it more short-term and then their balance and then once in a while? What would you typically- Really, it really depends. Mm -hmm. Really depends. I know I take it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I've had patients too with pain or whatever else. It's, it's just profound game changer. And like I said, if we compare it to any sort of oxycodone over the counter for pain or the anxiety benzodiazepines, this is such a safe way to go compared to many of the drugs that we use. Um, and the evidence is very strong. Of course. Yeah. Not only that, I, um, over my years of practice, what I did a lot of was help people taper off of these medications, mm -hmm. which many people should not have gone on yes. in, in the first place. But using CBD in the withdrawal process is very, very helpful. It helps to regulate the other neurotransmitters, you know, the GABA, mm -hmm. serotonin, which are calming and make you feel good. So it, it balances your, your neurotransmitters and helps you in a really easy way to taper off the drug. Fantastic. Well, this is tremendous. Where can people find you and your products? And I know people are dying to know, and I'll include the link. Okay. Tell us more about that. Uh, my website is drcast.com, D-R-C-A-S-S.com. And you'll find a lot of information, a lot of how-to information, background information. I have some blogs. In fact, I have a blog on traumatic brain injury and CBD. And I I'm all, went there, I see all kinds of great resources. And look at this, there's topicals. Tell us about your topicals. I see some facial products. Oh yes, and Sav, I, I have people who just swear by it. Yeah. You put it on, you know, for their joint pain and it, wow. it's amazing. And this, oh, that sounds super. And helpful. then I have some face serum for something for your eyes, mm -hmm. for those wrinkles that happen to show up as mm -hmm. we age. And there's also a nice face oil. So it's not oily, like it's, mm -hmm heavy oil. It's just a nice healing oil that does a lot. There's a lot that, uh, that CBD does for your skin as well. Yes. Fantastic. I'm excited to try some of those myself. <laughs> oh, very good. Um, good. Well, we will include that link. Um, looks like I uh, have all kinds of fun. So I'm going to go back and take a look at this. Um, any last words of advice to our listeners? Um, this is just a really uh, important topic. And I think it's a, such a great alternative to some of the uh, drugs and even um, whether it's inflammation, pain. Like I said, we talked about neurological inflammation, seizures. I see so many people nowadays with some sort of encephalopathy, whether it's from trauma or from infection or from inflammation. And we briefly talked about before, there's so many patients now with Lyme disease and mold related illness. And this is something that can be very helpful for them too. Is there anything we didn't mention that you can think of that would be another indication or that people might be thinking about that might be a little unusual? Um, I think we covered a lot of it. I mean, it's very good for dementia. It helps yeah. to break down amyloid plaque wow. and it helps to uh, build up BDNF, which is brain derived nerve growth factor. So it actually helps to regrow neurons and connections. And so pretty important in our older population. It is, and that is becoming epidemic, isn't it? Uh, the early dementia and the Alzheimer's. Yeah. Good. And then, of course, you have to treat everything else that's related to dementia. It could be Lyme and mold and all, mm -hmm. all the rest. So it's it's pretty complicated. I also want to say that I have um, a gift for your listeners, and that is a fifteen percent discount with the uh, code word Doctor Jill fifteen. Awesome! Thank you, Hyla. That's exciting. Um, we will be sure and share that as well. So if you guys want to check out her products, um, I will include that link. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time and uh, energy to talk to us. This is such an important topic um, and uh, really, really appreciate you today. And thank you for the opportunity. I just love educating people about CBD. Don't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you start low and slow, you gradually build up and you'll be really happy you did it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Thanks so much.